Good morning, everyone. Kindly rise, please, for the beginning of our Palm Sunday morning Mass. And if you'd face the back of the church so we might begin together in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps so that being made by his grace, partakers of the cross, we may have also a share in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we ask that you sanctify us in these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, and he said, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying this colt? They answered, The master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road, and now as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. For our Palm Sunday <coughs> entrance procession, I ask that you hold your palms maybe shoulder high, kind of do a little Catholic wave, okay? <coughs> and as we process in, we will bless your palms and you with baptismal water, with holy water, and sing together, beginning Holy Week. Our processional hymns are numbers 143 and, if needed, number 142. All glory, laud, and honor, and hosanna to the Son of David. <laughs> Let hosannas ring. The 
company of angels are praising you on high, and mortals join with all things created make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may sweet hosannas ring. The people of the Hebrews with palms before you went, our prayers and praise and anthems before you we present all glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring, to you before your passion they sang their hymns of praise. Now high exalted, our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Their praises you accepted, accept the praise we bring, great source of love and goodness, our Savior and our King. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet words Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, daughter of Zion, in the one who brings great joy. Sing praise, children of Judah. For the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, all who are thirsting for the stream of living joy. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who has an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, 
my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, <clears throat> and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. For the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ this morning, those in the congregation are invited to take the parts marked chorus. They may also be in bold face. And since uh, the first Palm Sunday occurred outdoors and we happen to be indoors, we should, in honor of that first Sunday, use our outdoor voices as we participate. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, begins near the bottom, second column of page 98. That's page 98, near the bottom, second column. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner, whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? for he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, so Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them and, after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Amen. 
Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabbatani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some years ago, Newsweek magazine carried a story. A story of a memorial service held for a gentleman named Hubert Humphrey, who had been a former vice president of the United States. And hundreds of people came from all over the world to say goodbye to a good old friend and a colleague. But one person who came was shunned and ignored by virtually everybody there. Nobody would look at him, much less speak to him. That person was former President Richard Nixon. And not long before that, he had gone through the shame and the infamy of the crimes we call Watergate in our history. He was back in Washington for the first time since he had resigned the presidency in disgrace. But then something happened. Perhaps the only thing that could have made a difference and broken the ice. President Jimmy Carter, who was in the White House at the time, came into the room. Before he was seated, he saw Nixon all alone over against the wall by himself. He went over to him as though he were greeting a family member and he stuck out his hand to the former president, smiling broadly into the surprise of everyone there. The two of them embraced. And Carter said, Welcome home, Mr. President. Welcome home. Commenting on that, The author of the article said if there was a turning point in Nixon's long ordeal in the wilderness for what he had done, it was that moment, that gesture of love, mercy, and compassion. Palm Sunday 
is a turning point for Jesus. Why? Well, Jesus had been becoming aware of all the oppositional forces that were beginning to align themselves against him and against his ministry. He had just raised Lazarus from the dead, and that had brought things to a peak. So there he was in Bethany, and he had to decide, do I go to Jerusalem for the feast, or do I escape to the desert? He's right in the middle of both possibilities. It's a mile and a quarter from Bethany to Jerusalem. And about the same distance to being safe out in the desert where nobody could find him. Turning point. Which way do I go? And Jesus chose to go forward. Turning point. President Carter could have sat down and ignored Nixon. Nixon could have seen Carter coming and walked out. Turning points. Take courage to help us to choose what is most needed, most wise, and most well, not only for our bodies, but also for our emotions, our hearts, and our souls, and our minds. And you and I know that it takes courage at any turning point to choose what is best, to overcome apprehension, to overcome fear, to overcome reluctance, to overcome shame, to overcome those human temptations to be less than the selves that God fashioned us to be in God's image and likeness. Palm Sunday was a turning point for Jesus. May I suspect and suggest that we too who face turning points in our lives, we have faced them, we will face them, and maybe we even are facing them. May we too have the courage to turn toward what we may fear or what may make us nervous and understand that following the will of God and doing what is right is the best way to get us through. There may be pain and suffering along the way. We know that from Jesus, but we also know the newness of life that comes from taking a turning point's invitation and accepting. Peace be with you. Please rise for our profession of faith. The Apostles' Creed, please, this morning, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. For the church, may we, in imitation of Christ, carry his cross in our own humbly with unselfish love for others. We pray to the Lord. For those preparing for First Holy Communion and Confirmation, may their newly enlightened faith help us renew our own. We pray to the Lord. For the success of the 2024 Catholic Stewardship Appeal, we pray to the Lord. For our leaders and all seeking public office, may they stand up for human dignity, promoting what is just and right. We pray to the Lord. For peace in Gaza and the Ukraine and an end to armed violence in our cities. We pray to the Lord. For those who face unjust accusation and insults because of race, religion, or personal opinions, may they have support and understanding. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, suffering, and dying, may they be comforted. We pray to the Lord. For the dead, especially Theodore Merton. May they share fully in the victory of Christ over death. We pray to the Lord. For one another's personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Now please say together the prayer for Eucharistic revival found on the front cover of our hymn book. Lord Jesus Christ, through the Paschal mystery of your death and resurrection, made present in every holy mass, pour out your healing love on your church and on our world. Grant that as we lift you up during this time of Eucharistic revival, your Holy Spirit may draw all people to join us at this banquet of life. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 160, Wood of the Cross. That's one six zero.
So pray, brethren, that my sacrifice, yours, may be pleasing, be acceptable to God, God the Almighty Father. To the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent he suffered willingly for sinners, accepted unjust condemnation, to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, send down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Peter and Paul, Matthias, Anthony, Lawrence, Margaret Mary, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Then deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord then be with you always. If you wish, you may offer each other a sign of our Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of all the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I saw one hanging on a tree in agony and blood who fixed his loving eyes on me as near his cross I stood and never till my dying breath will I forget that look it seems to charge me with his death though not a word he spoke my conscience felt and owned the guilt and plunged me in despair I saw my sin his blood had spilled and helped to nail him there but with a second look he said I freely all forgive this blood is for your ransom paid I died that you might live of him who died, the Lamb I crucified. And now my life will sing the praise of pure atoning grace that looked on me and gladly while his death my sin displays for all the world to view such is the mystery of grace it seals my pardon too with pleasing grief and mournful joy my spirit now is filled that I should such a life destroy yet live by him I kill forever etched upon my mind is the look of him who died the lamb I crucified and now my life will sing upon my mind is the look of him who died the lamb I crucified and now my life will sing the praise of pure atoning grace that looked on me and gladly took
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Join us for our Pasta Fest this Sunday from noon to 5 p.m. in the Church Hall. Support our youth by attending the Palm Sunday Passion Play at 6 p.m. Don't forget to vote on Tuesday, April 2nd. Plan to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet with us after all Masses, April 6th and 7th. Bring your own rosary or get one from us. Instructions provided. Please return your rice bowls on or before Good Friday. See today's bulletin for Holy Week and Easter Mass times as well as more information. Have a prayerful Holy Week. Two final little things. Firstly, uh, the, the cook, the top chef for the Pasta Fest is well known to us, and the Pasta Fest will be, I think, a real feast. And so, uh, if you're inclined on coming, maybe I'll see you there. Lastly, a smile for the week. There was a gentleman who was told by his wife, you're getting too old to do all kinds of that outdoor work around the house, like cleaning gutters and washing windows. I don't want you up on ladders and things. Okay, he decided to be obedient and called a guy to see uh, what it would cost him to have the windows washed. The guy looked at the first floor of the house and said, well, there's big windows and little windows. How about two bucks each window? Not bad. And he said, on the second floor, it's a little bit more work. Four bucks a window. Okay, not bad. And then he said, in any basement windows, 10 bucks a window. And the guy said, well, I get the two bucks, first floor, four bucks, Second floor, why 10 for the basement windows? He said, that's for the extra work of digging the hole to get the ladder in. <laughs> Lord be with you. And with you, Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ending. Let's go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 413, Jesus Remember Me. That's 413. And we will continue the song uh, as we all recess out, either continuing to sing the song or in silence. Jesus. 
Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember. 